please let me know that you can hear me um, by tapping a thumbs up or by um, typing that you can. Everything is well. Um, also, please, um, if you are going to Facebook Live, um, please make sure um, that you share it um, so that your friends that were has been a part of you would be able to um, would be able to hear um, and see. Um, we are grateful for it. Uh, we are honored today. We are uh, running some things. Um, good. Everyone can hear. Um, great, great, great. It's good to see everybody. Jacoby, so, so good to see you, sir. Um, we're praying for everyone. Um, and so we want to uh, we want to be a blessing. Everyone, great. I can hear. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, good. I still see Cole as my main. Is that, that's, that was supposed to be. Is that all right? You're, 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 you're the moment. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, wonderful. Wonderful. Amen. Well, we're we're excited about it. Um, grace and peace to everyone. I pray that everyone has had a good week. I pray that you have been staying safe, um, and I pray that you've been um, doing um, your due diligence as it relates to your health. Um, it is very important in this season's hour. I bless God for um, Apostle Myra for sharing that information uh, with us. Um, because it is important um, that we have that information and that we know um, that she's an always saying that uh, foods by God are always greater than food by man. So we want to continue to do those things. I believe this is the greatest hour for the church. I believe that we have an opportunity to show some great things and for God to be God. I'm believing that God is going to do some things that's um, going to bless our life and that's going to cause the church to thrive. So don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season um, you shall reap if you faint not. Amen. And so we're grateful today. So we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. I was giving people some time um, to get onto Facebook um, so that they could share this. Um, I believe that the Lord has given me um, a good word um, to share with you, just to encourage you um, and to strengthen you for your week. Um, as we recognize and see things are changing every day. Um, but we thank that God, God that we serve, who is always able to keep us from falling. And so we thank him because we recognize and we know um, that as long as we keep our hands in his hands, that he will make everything all right. I've been hearing people um, singing the song all week long. He's got the whole world in his hands. And the truth of the matter is he surely does. And he keeps every one of us. So continue to stay strong and continue to hold fast to the word and to the will of God for your life because you shall see um, the fruit of your labor. So if you will, go with get, get your Bibles and I want you to uh, turn with me to um, Mark chapter 10. Amen. To our Facebook family that's coming on, bless you, grace and peace to you. Uh, we pray that you're having a good week as well. Uh, Mark chapter 10, um, we're going to read a couple of verses and then we're going to um, get into this word. Mark chapter 10. Um, we're going to start at verse 46 and go down to verse 52. Amen. Mark Amen. chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. Amen. We're excited. We had last week, we had so many people on our Facebook Live last week. We had people from Germany, from California. Uh, we had people from right here in the city of Charlotte, from, from Charleston. Amen. And so we want to continue to be a blessing. We want to continue to be a light. Uh, remember last week, we talked about this is not the time to retreat, but this is the time to go forward and the time to let people know that there is a Savior. So Mark chapter 10, begin reading at verse 46, and it reads as I'm reading from um, the King James Version, um, New King James Version, excuse me, um, chapter 46, chapter 10, verse 46, and it says, And they came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more in a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garments, arose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou have 
uh, what, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed Jesus in the way. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this word. I pray, Father, now that you will anoint me afresh, that you will give me what I need to give to your people, that we will walk out be better this week than we've ever been. And we give your name the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you today uh, from the subject, um, the faith to do the impossible. Um, if you if you're still on if you're on Facebook Live if you're on if you're still on Zoom wherever you are type that in the faith to do the impossible. Um, we're 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 really seeing um, now um, churches having to do things different. Um, we're coming now to the time where um, the traditional ways of doing ministry and doing church um, is not going to suffice. And so we have to find ways to get things done in a different manner. And so we're looking and we're doing things that it seems like it's frustrating and it seems like it's hard. But I trust and believe that God knows all things. As we always say, nothing, catch, nothing catches God by surprise. And so we have to recognize that God is challenging the church again to live by faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is the confident assurance that what God has told us that he will do. And many times because we have had so many, so many uh, things in our life that keeps us from really operating and really um, becoming that, uh, we find ourselves on autopilot or we find ourselves just operating um, in the normalities of days of our life. Um, we, we know that when we wake up in the morning that the job is going to be there. We know that when we wake up in the morning that we're going to have gas in our car, food in our covers, or whatever it is. And now we're coming and facing a time um, that now even major businesses, major corporations um, are, are saying that they can't even uh, 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 subdue or they can't even handle um, this time. They're, they're, they're going into foreclosure or they're going into bankruptcy or they're going into a place where they have to shut down. And so we're in a time now that all of uh, the underlining platforms that we would no normally hold to are being eradicated from our life. Now people can't go to work. Or if people can go to work, they're going to work on a limited basis. Or if, they, if, if they're not doing that, um, now we're, we're not being able to, uh, to substantiate our income in our homes uh, as we would before. And so now it is requiring us as believers, it's requiring us as a people of faith um, to walk and operate the faith principles. Um, the Bible lets us know that the just shall only live by one way, and that's by faith. And God has designed that we will live by faith. Um, the word of the Lord tells us to take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. And so, so many times as believers, uh, we have found ourselves in places where we have allowed ourselves to begin to think about tomorrow and think about what we're going to do the next day and think about what's going to happen uh, this weekend or whatever is going on. But we never stop and really appreciated the day. And so God is trying to give us the ability that we appreciate and maximize the moments that we have right now. Every day we're waking up, we have to walk by faith because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to come down the pipeline. We don't know what the mayor or, or the government or the president is going to say that we're going to have to do. The only thing we know is that we don't know anything. And that's what faith is. Faith is operating in the unknown, the place where you don't even believe it, the faith place where you don't even recognize um, that it is happening. And so God is looking for the church now to get into a place to operate in a level of faith where we're not worried about tomorrow. We're not worried about next week. We're not worried about anything because we recognize and know that our God is the God that will always take care of us. The Bible promises us that if he could keep his eye on the sparrow, surely he got his eye on us. 
so we don't worry about these things. That's why you cannot let the enemy and the, and, and the stuff that we're hearing um, through the media to deter you and discourage you from thinking that things are not going to get better because things will get better. If you can, if you believe it, just type on the screen with me, things will get better. You just cannot worry about those things because if you trust in God, the Bible says that we trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to our own, our own understanding and all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. That's what we got to do. We got to know that this will get better. We know that God is going to cause it to be better. We know that God is going to work it out. The only thing we got to do is the word says stand still and yeah. see the salvation of the Lord. We are living in an opportunity in a moment now that the faith of God has to become the faith of men. We're living in a, in a time where the faith of God has to become our faith. We shall walk by faith and not by sight. That's what the word promises us. So don't be discouraged and don't be dismayed. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow, that's what he shall reap. So knowing you've been sowing good seed, you've been putting good seed in the ground, don't think that God has not seen it or has not gone unnoticed. The only thing you got to do is trust and believe that everything yes. is going to be all right. Yes. So in this passage of scripture, we find ourselves meeting up with a man uh, by the name of Bar Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus is a very interesting character because Bartimaeus is a, is a guy who has been sitting on the side, who's been put on the side of the road for days and for weeks, sitting there begging and asking for alms. He's asking for food, he's asking for money, whatever someone can give. Um, he's come to a place now um, that we, we, can, we he's come to a place where now he is dependent upon other people. Now, we don't know what happened. The Bible does not give us full explicit uh, information about this. We don't know if Bartimaeus was blind from, from death or from birth. We don't know if something happened where he became blind. The only thing we know at this point in time, he's blind. In other words, he finds himself at a place where his whole life is on hold. His life now has become whole because he can't see. He can't do anything for himself. He can't do anything to help himself. He's doing. He's, he's now at the mercy of everybody else. He's at the mercy of everyone having to do for him and having to take him places and having to help him. He's at the place where he now realizes he has to wait for help. You see, in this time, being blind meant that you couldn't work. It meant that you couldn't be by yourself. And it means you couldn't go anywhere by yourself. You always have to have someone to help you. All Bartimaeus could do uh, was to have his family and friends take him to the road every day to beg. That's all he could do. Isn't it amazing that at this point in time, we almost find ourselves in the same situation that right now, we, where we, what we were dependent upon, the things that we thought were working for us, the things that we thought were happening for us, are now the things that's not working for us. And so we're dependent upon other people, other things to help us to get through our day or get through our week. This is where Bartimaeus finds himself. He finds himself at a place where he can no longer can sustain himself. Oh, that's good right there because that's where we find ourselves now. In this season, it feels like now going to work, we can't do it. We can't go to our jobs. We can't go to our businesses. We can't do anything for ourselves. It seems like the only thing we can do is wait for other people to help us and to get us out of this position. But look at somebody, tell somebody that God is still yet able. That's why you can't put stock in this stuff. You can't put stock in your job. You can't put stock in your business. You can't put stock in other folks' things because those things will fail you. But the Bible lets us know that the word of God shall last forever. And so we can't be fearful about what's going on. We have to just trust that God has a plan. Sometimes God has to put us into a place where the only thing we can do is trust him and trust his will for our life. Uh, you got to understand he was struggling. He was in a place where he now could not fend for himself. He had to do things um, waiting on other people. 
And so he gets to a place where he finds himself in a place where now he hears a message. He hears a word. Jesus is coming through. Now, it's interesting that at this time, as he's coming through Jericho, that this is leading up to the Passover. Hallelujah. He's coming in where it's leading to the Passover. Jesus is coming into Jericho. And as he's walking into Jericho, as he's walking through, he's hearing the people. Here, Barnabas is hearing people saying this, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's hearing this. He's hearing something on a, on this day that he did not hear any other day that he sat at the same spot. He's hearing something that he did not hear sitting at the same place every day, day in, day out. And now he's hearing a voice of something new. This is a great opportunity because you don't understand where you are is giving you ability to hear something new, something fresh, something different. He finds himself here, but he's doing something on this day. So as he He's listening to the voice of God as he's listening to the people crying out, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. He changes his confession. Oh, he does, he does something different. He returns, he, le he leaves the begging. He stops the begging and he begins to begin to cry out to God. In this moment in season, people of God, you got to know how to change your verbiage. You got to know how to change your language. You got to know how to change what you're saying. Don't allow with your circumstances and your situation to cause your speech to become that of the situation. You got to change it. You got to do something different. As he's sitting on the side of the road all day, what he was doing was begging. But this day, when he heard that Jesus was coming in, when he heard people crying out or calling Jesus name listen he didn't call the name he cries out and say Lord Lord have mercy on me in other words he's taking advantage of this opportunity he's in a place where he could have felt sorry for himself he was in a place where he could have gave up he was in a place where he could have just said hey this is my life this is how it's going to be because I can't see I can't do anything I'm not doing anything so I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to continue to beg no he caught a diem. He sees the moment. People of God, this is your opportunity to seize moments. While you're in your home, this is your opportunity to pray more. In your homes, this is your opportunity to worship more. In your homes, this is your opportunity to get into the word of God where you're not having to go through the hustle and the bustle of the day. You're not having to, have to clock in at some man's job at this time and clock out. You're able to be at your home and you're able to worship and give God glory. Even if you are working for home, guess what? You can have your worship music on in your house and worshiping God as you're doing your daily things. But you got to do something different. You got to act different. You got to operate different. God is giving us a moment because he's passing through. I know it seems difficult, but he's passing through for the opportune time for the people of God to be able to cry out and hear his voice. He couldn't wait till tomorrow for this. Tomorrow wasn't promised. He couldn't wait for them all. He couldn't plan for them all. He had to plan for the moment right now because Jesus was passing by today. So it is now or never, he thought to himself. He said, figure now if this is the opportune moment for me to get God's attention. People of God, this is the opportune moment that you can get God's attention. You have the ability and the chance now to be able to lay on your face and to hear God and to speak to him and to cry out to him and to hear direction for your life, for your ministry, for your business, whatever it is that God has called you to. You have an opportune moment now to begin to hear his voice and to speak into the atmosphere. You got the moment, an opportune time to not just teach your children mathematics or English. You got a time that you can teach your children the word of God and how to be in the word and how to pray. You don't have to work for the school. I know we said it, it took prayer out of the schools. Well, God now took your children out of school so that now you can pray at home. He's given you the ability and opportunity to do something different, but you can't sit by the roadside and just beg. You got to now speak the word of the Lord. That's the key to a fresh start. Every day, there is a fresh start to give opportunities, opportunities to do things different, opportunities to make right, right the wrongs that may have happened. 
happen in your life. It is an opportunity now that you are able to witness to a friend or witness to a co-worker or a family member. You got the opportunity now that when people call you on the phone and they're crying or they're worried that you have the ability to minister to the saints, to minister to their hearts and speak into their lives. You got the ability now to declare and decree the things of God over their life no matter what the circumstances is and the situations. I said it last week and I'll say it again. If you got to remind them, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. This is the hour saints that well faith can do the impossible. We can do things that we never thought we were able to do. We're able to go over things that we never thought we'd be able to go over. The only thing we got to do is hold fast to the word of the Lord. Trust in the Lord and let him know. Let him know that God, for you I live and for you I'll die. I need somebody to believe it. To just type hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, because God has given the saints the victory. Oh, God, he's given us the victory. He's given us opportunities. And watch this. And yes, most of us, we got to stop procrastinating. We have procrastinated long enough. Procrastination doesn't make your life easier. Procrastination makes your life more stressed. The reason why some of you are so stressed is because you're procrastinating from getting into the presence of the Lord. You're trying to figure out how to make a dollar. And God is trying to give you a place that you get, that you get your house kept. He's trying to get you to a place where you will not forget or live, uh, live by poverty, that you don't have to live for a dollar, but you can live by the grace and the mercy of God. He's trying to get us to a place as he did the woman with the meal barrel, that as long as she had need, there was a meal in the barrel, all because she led, she was listening to the voice of God. People of God in this hour, you can't procrastinate. Listen, you don't have no place to be. You don't have no place to go. You can wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning now and go back to bed because you ain't got to go to work. See, that's the thing. God has given you the opportunity to seek him early in the morning. He's given you the opportunity to go before his presence and you can still get some rest after that. But we got to stop procrastinating. Stop putting off for tomorrow. Stop saying, well, I'll take care of it tomorrow. No, people of God, your sisters, your brothers, your family, your mama, they need you right now. They need a word from the Lord right now. What if Jesus would have waited till tomorrow to come into Jericho instead of coming in today, then the, the, the blind man would have still been blind another day. You don't know what your words can do that can open up people's eyes to right now. All you got to do is speak into their lives and the hearts of God's people and you can watch their eyes become open. You are anointed to do this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are anointed to do these things. But what happens is besides procrastination, our fears hold us back from a fresh start. The thought, they, they thought, watch this, they thought if they could intimidate him, they thought if they could intimidate Bartimaeus, that he would have shut up. Notice now Jesus wasn't the one that told him to be quiet. It was all the other people that was telling him to be quiet. Notice now, it is not God that's not, that's not, that's not providing or not working things out for you. It's all these people saying this and that. And what is happening is we got so much in fear that we let the enemy shut our mouth. We let the enemy cause us to walk back and step back. And we're not doing the very things that we need to do to get a fresh start. They, they, they thought it intimidated him. See, watch this. Fear keeps you from launching out and keeps us from having the type of faith to move forward in God's will. This is the plan of the enemy. He's wanting to make sure that you never move forward. Can you imagine? I need y'all for a moment to just think about Bartimaeus sitting by the road. Can't see a thing. Don't know who's around him. Don't know if anybody's trying to harm him. Don't know if anybody's trying to kill him. The only thing he knows is I'm blind. I can't see a thing. But he did not allow his blindness to, keep, to put him in fear. He didn't allow his blindness to keep him from slouching out. In fact, it was his blindness that motivated him to speak and cry out to God. Listen, people, this ought to be the opportune time for this to be your motivation to get into the presence of the Lord and to cry out and to begin to operate in your rightful place. This is the opportune time for you to be able to declare and decree the power of God 
in your house, in your family, wherever you are. This is the opportune time for you to begin to operate the faith principles of your life and never allow the enemy to shut you up and to stop you from moving into the place of God. So watch this. What does fear make us do? Fear make us do three things. I'm almost finished with my little Sunday school lesson, but it makes you do three things. It makes you become skeptical. Now and then, it makes you become skeptical. It makes you become selfish. And it makes you become short-sighted. If you're watching, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Zoom, if you're where I'm typing on there, skeptical, selfish, and short-sighted. Skeptical, selfish, and short-sighted. That's what fear makes us do. Fear makes us become self, self skeptical. What does skeptical mean? It means we are afraid to try something new. We're afraid to do something different. That's what it does. It makes you say, well, I can't, I can't, I can't afford to do that right now because of such and such and such. Or I can't, I'm, I'm afraid to do this because if I do this, this may happen or that may happen. It's trying to make you skeptical. It's trying to get you in a place where you cannot operate with God. It's trying to make you skeptical. Then it tries to make you selfish. What is selfish? Selfish means that we are afraid to commit to God and others. Now notice that I didn't say just to God. Uh, selfishness makes you a, makes you afraid to commit to God and others. So now it's, it makes you afraid. So now I can't. I want to tithe because I may need this money. I don't want to give because I may I may need this. I don't want to trust them. I don't want to trust this. This is what it does. It makes you a skeptic, selfish. You start holding everything for yourself when you don't understand. The Bible says, "Give and it shall be given back to you." Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. The Bible lets us know that if we give, to, if we give it to men, they're going to give it back to us. This is why you cannot allow fear to get you because what happens is it makes you selfish and you become selfish into the realm of the spirit. You become selfish to people and now you're not giving God the opportunity to be God in your life. Somebody say, I won't be selfish. Then the next thing it does, it keeps you short-sighted. You stay short-sighted. Your short-sighted means you tend to focus on what has happened instead of what is happening right now and the future. Because what because we constantly hear what has happened, what has happened now is affecting what we're doing at this point in time. But you gotta recognize that that's the tactics of the enemy to make you fear and doubtful against the will of God. You gotta know that the plan of God is still yea and amen. That's why you can't worry. You can't be scared of these things because the enemy is trying to make you think and feel as if it will not happen. So you get stuck. You stay stuck in your past. Yes, the past was real, but watch this. It's not true to your present nor to your future. I don't care what your past has said. I don't care what has happened then. It doesn't matter. As long as you begin to do something different now, you don't procrastinate in your present now to affect your future. God is looking for us to not be held captive to what was. He's looking for us now to move into what shall be and what is right now. So you can't be short-sighted. You got to look at the thing. You got to see what God sees. You got to hear as God hears. This is what Barnabas did. Even though he was blind, he understood that there was something out here that was greater than me. There was something out here that was going to give me the ability to do what I could not do in and of my own self. I cannot be fearful because I know in whom I trust. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we shall trust in the name of the Lord. Why? Because the name of the Lord is not a weak tower. It's not a mediocre tower. It's a strong tower. That's where we hold ourselves and know that God is a God of saying that we say he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We're not worried about tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take care of itself. But as long as I bless him today, I know what tomorrow holds for me. And guess what? Oh, king, even if he don't deliver, we still will not bow down. You better not let the enemy or your circumstances or your situation cause you to miss out on the opportune moments to let God be God. This is our, this is our ability 
So what he do? He operated now in faith. He had his faith. Watch this. When you have faith, your whole vocabulary changes. He's not begging no more. He's not asking people, watch this, for, for just uh, temporal things. He's not just sitting here asking them for money just for the day. He's not just here asking them to help him for the day. He now changes his vocabulary. His vocabulary goes from not from, from instead of asking for men, he's now asking God. Hallelujah. See, this is the thing that we got to understand. We got this little stimulus package that's coming out. Hallelujah. Amen. I bet if you know what, for me, that's my thought. It ain't doing too much for anybody. But you know what? Okay, they want to give it to me. Bless God. But guess what? I don't have to worry or I don't have to ask the president for a stimulus package. I don't have to ask the government for a stimulus package because I got the one who has created all things. I got the one that has a cattle on a thousand hill. I have the one that is able to give me whatever I ask for. If I seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, I don't have to worry because if I seek him, I mean, I got to change my vocabulary. My vocabulary can't be, I hope and I wish. My vocabulary must be, I know that it shall be. I can't be, I'll be praying and saying, Lord, if it is your will, I know it's his will. His will for me is that I prosper and be in good health even as my soul prospers. That's the will of the Lord. I must operate in confidence, this confident assurance that I have in him that whatsoever I ask in faith, it shall be done. He did not begin to beg no more. He began to stand boldly and declare. Jesus asked him, what do you want? He said, what I want is I want to see again. He didn't say, well, if you can, well, if you might. No, he declared and declared Creed in this season, people of God, as, as long as you are king and priest, you have the ability to declare and decree, decree over your family, decree over your finances, decree over your budget, decree over your, over your marriage, whatever it is, that it shall live and not die. You got to know how to operate the principles and make the principles work for you. As he says, speak to the mountain and cause the mountain be, tur be turned into the youngest See, you got to decree what the Lord of God has said about your life. So he operates in faith. His vocabulary changes. Watch this. When you begin to speak the impossibilities that become possible in God's economy, notice now, he begins to, you begin to speak of the impossibilities that becomes possible in God's economy. Now you got to understand, because God's economy is not just money. In this world, we, the economy that we have is a dollar bill. That's what our economy is. That's what our economy based off of. Yes, we have natural things, but all comes down to is money. But in God's economy, it ain't just money. It's health. It's healing. It's wealth. It's deliverance. It's freedom. It's power. It's, the, it's salvation. All of this is in the economy of God. When I begin to speak the things of him, I don't care if the job don't ever show back up. Guess what? I got a God that knows my needs and he meets them. That's why we call him Jehovah Jireh, for he sees my needs afar off and he's already made provision. I'm not worried about it. If my job tells me you don't have another job, guess what? But my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and his glory. You got to stand in faith, people of God. You got to stand in faith, brothers and sisters, and let the devil know that you know what? I don't care what happens. I'm still going to stand and I'm going to declare and decree the word of God around you. And then when you start doing that, you got to start now hanging out, watch this, with people of same faith. In other words, Jesus told him, bring him to me or have him come to me. In other words, he was not hanging out with the crowd no more. He came and hung out with the one that had like-minded faith. Notice, people of God, all these disciples around, but they didn't have the like-minded faith. Jesus had to pull him out of that circle. He had to pull him out of that sphere and bring him to him. This is 
what happened, people. Some of you have been pulled out of your job so you can hear God clear. Some of you have been pulled out of situations so that you can know God in the realness and the fullness of who he is. Some of you have been pulled out so that now you can hear clearly the direction of the Lord for your life because it was being contaminated by your job or by people on your job or by family members. It's been so contaminated that God said, I got to move you from that environment so that I can speak to you face to face. Notice, he didn't speak to him in the crowd. He spoke to him face to face. Oh God, y'all got to catch this here. God is trying to, that's why he's isolating us in our houses so that he can speak to us face to face. He wants to hear your voice and he wants you to hear his. He said, you got to hang out with the same people of faith. Yes, you feel inspired as they are sold out. And this is what he did. When Jesus began to speak to him, when Jesus began to say things to him, it was like-minded faith, two or three touching and agreeing. He came into agreement with the will of God. Notice, y'all, notice this right here. He had faith all the time because Jesus prophesied and spoke. He said, it is your faith that made you whole. His faith was there, but it was hampered by all of the stuff that was going on in his life. I'm not saying that you don't have faith, but what has happened is so much stuff in life has caused your faith to be diminished so that you don't even believe it. And God had to rescue you from that place so that your faith can become strong again. I need you to type on your screen, tell them my faith is becoming strong again. My faith is getting to a place where I know that God is going to work it out. My faith is getting back to a place where I know God is going to heal, where I know God is going to deliver. My faith is getting back to a place that I know that and if God don't do it, it can't be done. God, I feel my help in here for a little while. But you got to know and trust that God will always make a way for you. You just got to hold fast to him. The Bible says, he says, Jesus says to him, he says, what do you want? He's the blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Now notice, y'all, he understood this one thing. It wasn't his affair. It wasn't he needed his hands. It wasn't he needed his feet. It wasn't that he needed his arms or anything. Because all of that was still there. The thing that was that was causing him not to operate was his sight. Notice, people of God, that he needed he asked for the thing that would help him now begin to function again. His sight was the thing that was able him to get back and function in life. He said, God, I want my sight. What was my sight going to be able to do? My sight now will help me walk where I need to walk. My sight will help me do what I need to do. My sight will help me to, 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 to handle things that I need to handle. He was saying, God, I want my sight back. And look at what Jesus says to him. And Jesus said to him, watch this. He never touched him. He never laid a hand on him. The only thing he said to him was this right here. He said, go your way. It was your faith that did this all along. Now, if I, if I can, just for a moment, I don't, I don't want to take anything away from God because I, I can't. But really what God was saying in this passage of scripture was, I didn't even need to show up, really. Your faith was already the key that you needed. I just came to help boost it. Can I help y'all understand something? You don't need God to show up. You just need to put into action your faith. You don't need God to come down and deliver Put action to your faith. You don't need God to come down and make ways out of no way. Put action to your faith. Jesus never touched him. He just said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. I ain't do nothing. Yes, so Jesus, I didn't do a thing. I was just, I was just a piece to strengthen, help you strengthen yourself. That's what God is telling us today. I'm already here with you. Now you do it. Your faith. Your faith. 
Not Jesus coming in and touching your, your wallet. Not Jesus coming and touching your bank account. Not Jesus coming and touching your body. Because all those things have already been done. Exercise your faith to do the impossible. Do something that you never did. Tomorrow morning, wake up earlier than you did before. Tomorrow morning, spend your time, spend your time in prayer first. Tomorrow morning, allow God to be seen. Tomorrow morning, do something that you never thought you could do. Do the impossible. Do what felt like it would never be done. You have the ability. Yeah, I sweat all the time. Because when you allow God, when you allow your faith, rather, to be exercised, you will be surprised at the stuff that will happen for your life. This man thought that Jesus was going to touch him. And he didn't realize that all he needed to do was exercise his faith. His faith was the thing that made him whole. That's what the scripture says. Thy faith has made you whole. What does the word whole mean? Complete. Saved. Not wanting for nothing. He didn't get a partial sight. He didn't get partial. He didn't get temporary. He got permanent. In this season, let your faith do the impossible. Let your faith stretch out there so much that it almost scares yourself. Notice now, when G, when the man when they called, he didn't he wasn't scared. He jumped up and ran. Now that that's that kind of messed me up too, because I'm saying how in the world could this man who can't see know how to run to Jesus? I like to believe because he because he was listening to the voice. And he followed what he heard, not what he saw. See, in this season, you got to follow what you hear. When you hear the voice of God, you got to be quick to move, quick to do it. Because that's when you're going to see your faith. That's when you're going to see things happen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, today I thank you. I bless you for this word. I pray, Father, that your people have received something today that will cause their week to be better, their life to be better. Father, I pray now, and I ask to you for, for every person that their faith comes alive even more. Their faith to do the impossible things. What seems to be that they cannot do, thank you that in their faith it shall be done. Father, I pray, Father, that you will strengthen them beyond what they could ever imagine. Allow them to be whole. Give them their sight back, their spiritual sight, so that they can operate in your word. Father, I pray now for every house that's listening. I pray, Father, that you will allow them to know your voice. I ask now that the Holy Spirit will embark upon every home and overshadow every person with his glory. That they won't be afraid to step out and do the things that you called them to do, even in this season. And we thank you for it. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, listen, I want you to be encouraged. God is doing some great things. God is doing amazing things. And in this season, in this season, we don't want to be afraid. Amen. So listen, what I need you to do.